Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Azra, and I'm a researcher in Genos. Uh, today, I will present you the work that was done in relation to the genome-wide association studies of n glycomes of individual plasma uh, proteins. And I think uh, my presentation is complementary to uh, Professor Zuri's uh, presentation. Uh, and you will see, we will have some of the parts that are repeating. However, I do have some uh, new things that I will talk about. And I want to say that this is collaborative effort, uh, not only teams from Ganos, but also University of Edinburgh, Faculty of Pharmacy, and uh, as well as uh, some of the teams that are present here today. So the first, in the first part, I will briefly explain what the genome-wide association studies are, and then we'll go through the results of the studies of individual uh, plasma um, protein and glycomes, such as IgG, uh, IgG-FAB glycosylation, transferrin, uh, C3, and AGP, which was not presented before. So this is uh, something new. And I want to just say that the ones that are in red are still in progress, so these are not uh, published results. And there is a lot more work to be done to reach that stage. However, I will present some of the first findings we have. So we know that, uh, I guess everyone here already knows that the regulatory network of protein glycosylation is a very dynamic uh, network. It's very uh, complex network of uh, enzymes and small molecules that all come together in order to regulate this process. And what makes it a bit more complicated to understand how it's uh, regulated is that it's non-template driven process. So we don't have, as in transcription and translation, we don't have the real clear recipe, let's say the template that uh, can be followed in order to understand how these glyco uh, forms uh, are formed. So what makes it a bit more complicated is the fact that not only genetics, but also other layers of genetic uh, regulation, such as epigenetics, do play a role here, as well as environmental factors. But we can kind of start uh, looking into genetics by a, a very I would say, elegant uh, and s simple uh, yet elegant approach of genome-wide association studies that you uh, already heard from Professor Yuri about, but I will just briefly explain how it would work by the definition of AI, NA, uh, NIH, so National Institute of Health. Genome-wide association studies are defined as study of common genetic variation across the entire human genome that is designed to identify genetic associations with observable traits. So the idea is to, let's say, scan through the genome to see the variants that are associated with variation in your phenotype. So in this case, you will start with a big human cohort in which you have both genotype data as well as the phenotype measurements. In our case, the phenotypes will be glyco measurements. Then uh, once you pre-process and quality control the data, you can proceed with testing the association between each individual uh, SNP, a single nucleotide polymorphism, and your phenotype values. That can, in the case of uh, quantitative traits such as uh, glyco measurements, we use a linear regression model uh, testing the association between the phenotype and number of the effect alleles. Then we rep represent the results here in the form of Manhattan, Manhattan plot here, where on the x-axis you have the SNP uh, chrom chromosomal position, and on the y-axis you have minus log 10 of the p-value, which basically then uh, means that the higher the peak, the more significant the association is. What makes it uh, also valuable um, for, uh, in, in context of GWAS is the fact that you can uh, meta-analyze different GWAS uh, summary statistics from different uh, cohorts, and then that way increase your sample size and also increase your statistical power to find novel associations. And one note about GWAS studies is that they are hypothesis-generating approach. So at this stage, you're actually exploring the genome, exploring the associations then later, that later can be used to set hypotheses and test in uh, further functional studies. So, uh, as I said, I will go through results of uh, individual plasma um, protein and glycome GWAS studies, and I will just briefly introduce uh, all of them, but I'm sure you already are familiar uh, with these. But uh, just to mention, IgG, immunoglobulin G, is um, a protein produced by plasma B cells, and it's a very important component of antibody-based uh, immunity. And we know that its uh, glycosylation alters the affinity of IgG for FC receptors, and it's uh, also been associated with a uh, function of IgG itself, its uh, half-life, its stability. And one thing also to, to note here is that we don't have only the glycans on the FC portion of IgG, but there are, there's a portion of IgGs that also have FAB glycosylation. 
So given that we had access to a lot of samples that have both um, genotype data as well as the glyco measurements, we were able to run many GWAS studies of IgG and glycosylation. Um, now these numbers might not be the same as Professor Yuri's because um, he already updated his uh, presentation uh, here, um, but also I will uh, here present also parts that were not uh, published. So uh, the one uh, IgG G was, uh, and glycum G was of galactosylation uh, was done also on other IgG uh, glycum traits, so including also um, degalactosylation, uh, uh, cellulation, fucosylation, bisecting glucose, and so on in um, almost 14,000 samples. And in here we see 42 genomic regions that are associated with uh, IgG and glycosylation. And of course we do see, as in all the other GWASs, we see associations with glycosyl transferases genes, which is uh, expected. But we also see some uh, novel associations that do include glycosylation-related genes, such as, for example, this locus of uh, monoxidase beta, uh, as well as the SPPL3 gene. It's a, uh, it encodes an enzyme that actually cleaves the active domains off of the glycosyl transferases in the Golgi gene that way actually um, uh, controls the levels of active glycosyl transferases in the Golgi. I will mention this again later on. Um, but then here I want to present, just uh, briefly present uh, results of the FAB glycosylation GWAS, uh, because uh, we do know that there is portion of IgGs that do contain uh, FAB uh, glycans, and most of them are cellulated glycans. Here in our sample of around 9,000 um, samples, which uh, from these four cohorts, we were able to calculate the levels of IgG FAB glycosylation. Why only in these? It's because uh, we are measuring these uh, because uh, when doing the UPLC glyco measurements, we are capturing both FAB and FC uh, glycans. So by, uh, by the, uh, under the assumption that these structures uh, that are found here on the right end of the chromatogram come from FAB region, we can calculate the level of FAB glycosylation. So these here, and then with these 9,000 samples, we, all, let's say, only get uh, three, uh, three uh, genomic regions, but this, this is also expected because we don't, uh, uh, we don't necessarily expect to have uh, a large and wide genetic control of the levels of FAB glycosylation, so in the variable part of IgG. Uh, but what we see here is uh, the association with the ST6GAL1, which is expected, as I mentioned, it's mostly cell-related structures, and then association of chromosome 6 with the HLA uh, region, which we know is important for fine-tuning the adaptive immune system. Then uh, what was interesting here and uh, novel for us is the association of chromosome 2 in the AFF3 gene. This is a transcription factor which is preferentially expressed in lymphoid cells uh, with potential regulatory uh, role in lymphoid development. These same variants that we find were previously associated with susceptibility to uh, many autoimmune diseases. But there was also a study done uh, that, what the show, that has shown that um, AFF3 actually regulates immunoglobulin class switch recombination uh, by controlling the mutagenesis of the switch regions through recruitment of AID. Uh, AID is this enzyme that is known to be involved in a, a somatic hypermutation and class switch recombination of immunoglobulin genes. So this does indeed show that there is a direct um, a correlation, a direct uh, association with uh, IgG. Uh, however, um, we still don't know how would manipulation, for example, of this gene uh, affect the levels of FAB glycosylation. That's something that would be interesting to check in the functional studies. Then I will just briefly mention here results from uh, transferrin uh, GWAS. Uh, transferrin is iron-binding glycoprotein that is produced mainly by hepatocytes. 
Um, this is also uh, something that uh, Yuri mentioned, and I, I'm just trying to emphasize this. We have IgGs, the plasma cells. We have transferring uh, produced by hepatocytes. Um, and we, in regards to its glycosylation, we know that it has two end glycosylation sites that, have, that are being used already as markers for uh, CDGs, alcohol abuse, and hepatocellular carcinoma. This was measured, uh, transferring was measured in two uh, European cohorts, Viking and Korchula and uh, 35 lichen measurements are um, uh, obtained in those measurements. So my colleague Ariana Landini, from, at that time from the University of Edinburgh, uh, did run GWAS of transferring glycom, um, and she found 10 loci associated with transferring uh, glycans. Uh, but at the same time, she did run in parallel IgG GWAS in those same 2,000 uh, samples. And indeed, what she sees here is that there are uh, protein-specific uh, glycosylate transferases genes such as MGUT5, ST3GAL4, B3GUT1 for transferrin, uh, and we see ST6GAL1 and MGUT3 for IgG. However, there are also shared associations here at the fucosyl uh, transferases genes, and this is something that I will show on again uh, later. Um, then this is totally new. Uh, this is the first time I'm presenting this. These are, this is, these are results from the AGP glycom GWAS, because in, uh, we did, I I in the meantime, get the AGP glycom measurements. Um, AGP stands for alpha-1 acid glycoprotein, which is an uh, acute phase glycoprotein in blood, which is primarily synthesized, again, in the liver by hepatocytes. Um, we know that uh, it is immunomodulatory protein, however, its biological role is not completely understood. Uh, you might also know it under the name autosomal or ORM. Uh, with regards to its glycosylation, we know that it has five n complex glycans, and these have been measured and characterized by, uh, by the team in GANOS using LCMS uh, method. This was measured in two uh, cohorts, Korchula and Var again, resulting in 2,000 samples that had both genotype and uh, glycan measurements. Uh, we have 74 glycan uh, measurements that are overlapping between these two cores, so we were able to use them in the meta-analysis. So uh, with this, we get actually seven genom genomic regions that are associated with AGP uh, uh, glycosylation. So we have the expected um, MGUT5, FOOT6, ST3, uh, GAL4 associations, as well as the association with the protein encoding, um, uh, the AGP encoding region ORM1 and ORM2, but that is also expected given that there are differences in glycosylation of these two variants of AGP protein. Uh, however, there is also association here in the SPPL3 HNF1 alpha region. This is uh, important to mention because both of these uh, we see in the GWAS studies. However, you might, when you see the uh, region location, you might assume, oh, this is the same association. However, it does seem to be a different causal uh, variant that is, uh, that is uh, associated with, uh, between the proteins. In some cases, as I said, this is new. There is still more work to be done. However, trying to see whether there are independent associations is something that, uh, that will be uh, done next to see uh, whether there is also association with both of these genes. Then, uh, again, a new study uh, on C3 glycom GOS. Uh, C, uh, C3 is complement component C3, which plays a central role in activation of complement system, and uh, it has two N glycosylation sites uh, that, is, that are occupied exclusively by high mannose glycans. Uh, these uh, C3 glycosylation was measured in uh, uh, Korchula cohort uh, with around 8,800 samples in the GWAS, and uh, for phenotype we had nine glycan measurements, so two glycosylation sites in total. Uh, and here what we see, again, six genome-wide uh, significant uh, loci that are associated with C3. Um, at the first glance, you can already see that there is lack of glycosyl transferases enzyme. Again, expected because we know that in C3 we have only high mannose uh, glycans. However, you might also see here on the chromosome 19, we have association with FOOT6 region. However, the, uh, the region um, is very wide. 
uh, where we see the SNP. So it might not be the case that foot six is, or, or three or five, because they are in the same region, is the causal gene in this case. Uh, we do see association with monosidase on the chromosome uh, one, uh, MAN1C1, which is monosidase, enzymes also uh, known to be involved in N glycan processing. Uh, there is also the CFHR uh, um, uh, gene, uh, gene region uh, on chromosome 1, which is, again, complement um, age factor uh, genes, which I think is also relevant in this case. But also there is association with C3 uh, region, again, protein encoding the C3 um, as a gene encoding the C3 pro protein itself. Uh, here in this, what is interesting about the association in C3 region is that we see two independent associations, and they are uh, actually found in coding region of the gene, which is, uh, if you know GWAS, usually you will find associations in non-coding regions, and then you are trying to understand in, in, to what gene those uh, variants are associated to. But in this case, we have a clear association in the C3 um, coding region uh, itself. And these two... Uh, Variants were found to 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 change, uh, indeed, the encoded amino acids and influence the um, uh, assumed to influence alternative pathway activation, and also factor age uh, affinity of the C C3, and also in one of the studies found to be associated with uh, rheumatoid arthritis susceptibility. Uh, but what you can also notice on the right here are basically uh, uh, first uh, the upper uh, three. Um, a plot show associations of uh, glycans with the, the variants uh, genotypes in these uh, positions uh, on one of the glycosylation sites, and the down uh, you can see the other glycosylation sites. It show, uh, site. So it shows that uh, by these variants, only one of the glycosylation sites is affected by these two, two variants. So it's something that is uh, definitely interesting to further look into and explore. And I think this is also something that's very uh, similar to what uh, Professor Yuri al already uh, has shown. But here I also include the IgA uh, GWAS results because even though it, it was not done by our group but by uh, the groups from Twins UK and LUMC, but it's important here to again really clearly show that uh, there is a, a tissue specific uh, regulation of the glycosylation and here we see associations with B4-GALT1 and ST6-GALT1, which are found for IgG and IgA. However, these associations are lacking in other proteins. Uh, but one other thing that I want to emphasize is that we are talking about different statistical powers for the in different GWASs. So in IgG, we have almost like 14,000 samples, but in, in, in uh, C3, we have 800 samples. So the lack of association does not mean that it's not there, it's just that we don't have enough statistical power. But only uh, already at this stage, we can kind of see some patterns. Uh, and also, interestingly, not in, but also expected, we see the SE3 GALF4 association only in transferrin and AGP, and lack of it in IgG and IgA. Uh, also, the difference here between MGA3 and MGA5, because in, um, MGA3 actually controls uh, or is associated in the bisecting LUCNAC um, transfer on the uh, core of N glycan. Uh, however, MGA5 is associated with branching, and indeed we see branching, uh, increased branching in transfer in and AGP uh, glycans, and we don't see those in. Uh, IgG and IgA. But um, here we see fucosyl transferases, uh, regions that are, uh, or loci that are found in both in IgG and transferrin. And this is something, again, my colleague Ariana Landini did look deeper into, and just to show you what Yuri was talking about, basically trying to see whether the patterns of associations in these regions match between proteins. In, the, in this case, she actually has, from this colocalization analysis, has found 100% probability that these are not the same associations. So they are uh, both of the... Uh, Phenotypes in this case, transferring glycan and IgG glycan have association in the region. However, the causal variant is different. 
Uh, then uh, sh this, uh, it could be hypothesized, so this is uh, that the variant that we see in uh, the transferring uh, uh, transfer glycom GWAS is basically affecting uh, binding of it, the uh, agent F1 alpha, which is hypothesized specific transcription factor. While on the other side in um, IgG, the same variant in fucosal uh, transferase 8 is associated with Icarus uh, binding, which is again plasma specific. Uh, uh, plasma cell specific transcription factor. And I also here included some other glycosylation related genes that might be interesting. Uh, we see, as I mentioned, the monosidase beta in IgG, but then we also have monosidase as um, uh, monosidase uh, enzyme on, in AGP and C3 on chromosome 1. And then here these two, SPPL3 and HNF1 alpha. Uh, why I will mention these, because again, I did check whether these associations are the same. Uh, between plasma and IgG, and what in, indeed what we see is that the pattern of association in the region does look different. And this one indicates that in IgG we actually have, most likely have SPPL3 as a causal gene, while on the other side in plasma we have association with HNF1 alpha, and this has already been a, a proven association previously uh, affecting the fucosal transferases uh, uh, expression. And here I will uh, mention the SPPL3. Again, we show we have besides the glycosyl transferase as enzymes that we uh, that we found, we do see other genes that are glycosylation related. As I said, it is uh, an enzyme that regulates the the pool of active Golgi, uh, Golgi uh, uh, glycosyl transferases enzymes, and it's been uh, shown to to affect MGAT5, B4GAT1, and B4GALT1 uh, GALT1 genes, which are uh, before GALT1 being um, uh, uh, a glycosyl transfer is involved in IgG and glycosylation. So what, what we can uh, tell for our future work is, of course, uh, with any GWAS study, you can always redo it with larger sample size, hoping to capture the, the remaining uh, variation that you might not capture with the current sample sizes. Uh, also to do the colocalization analysis to check whether these causal variants are shared between proteins. And what we, as I have shown on these two examples, is that sometimes even though we are talking about the same gene, it might not be the same causal variant. Or if we are talking about same region, it might not be the same causal gene. Um, but of course, to even uh, uh, call something causal, you have to prove it or, and, and show it in a functional study, so that is also uh, what we are trying to do and currently working on uh, doing the functional follow-ups for uh, many of these candidate genes. And yeah, at the end, I want to um, thank all the teams that are involved in the GWA studies and all the participants in uh, various European cohorts that we are using. Thank you. understood you correctly that C3 SNP uh, came from a coding variant? Yes. And is that an amino acid substitution? And if so, have you looked at what the potential structural or functional uh, role of that might be using alpha fold or whatever? Uh, I myself have not because, uh, again, this is a collaborative effort with the faculty of uh, pharmacy, so they were uh, looking into, into it a bit deeper here. From this study uh, from 2020, there are, uh, th there's, there are the changes that happened. So here at the position 102, we have changed from arginine to glycine, and here from proline to leucine. Um, at, this, at this point, we cannot really tell whether it's uh, changing anything in terms of uh, and glycosylation sites, whether it's the accessibility to the uh, glyco glycosyl transferases and, uh, or the other uh, enzymes that might be important. But that's something that should definitely be looked further into. Uh, but also one thing I want to say is that we were not kind of running to uh, really uh, try to understand everything at this point because for this one we do still need to replicate uh, our GWAS, uh, but it is definitely something that's uh, worth looking further into. Hi, uh, very, a really nice presentation. I was wondering regarding these food eight uh, different variants that you have like in plasma and in liver, 
So as I understood you did the colocalization between the GWAS signals, I was wondering if you also tried colocalization with CCQTLs, with different tissues, and maybe with PQTLs from plasma that I think there's nothing else interesting. <laughs> No, uh, I have not. Uh, as I said, uh, this was work done by the colleague Ariana Landini, but as I said, there's definitely future work doing the localization analysis and really uh, trying to understand, especially now that we have many, many proteins for which we have uh, GWAS summary statistics. That will be cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Azara, for the nice uh, data and uh, presentation. I was wondering on the SPPL3, so you see the associations, but I'm wondering which glycans are associating and what does that tell you about the specific glycosotransferases that, that might be hit by this protease? Yeah, the, the interesting thing about SPPL3 is that it was associated with monocellulation trait, uh, but what we know about SPPL3, it is uh, associated with um, um, before gal t one so it might be uh, also like controlling the levels of galactosil, uh, galactose, uh, galactosylated structures that are kind of precursor for the cellulated structures that could be also potential way in how it, it controls, but again, something that we need to look deeper into. Very nice uh, presentation. I, I missed it on the C3. So what, what, is the, uh, what are the traits that you are associated with in C3? Uh, so we have nine glycan measurements. So these are just glycopeptides. Um, here are the, basically I didn't list the, the, but we did use the direct measurements. So there are no derived traits, but here are the, the structures that we are doing the, using as phenotypes. So here are six of them actually. Basically two, two glycosylation sites and then different structures. So, so it's not uh, occupancy of the sites or anything, it's really the structure? Yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you.